Hey guys, Charles Walker here. So I wanted to do this video on the most requested topic I have gotten so far, and that is DM tips. So I get DMs on my Instagram a lot uh, for people asking questions and stuff, and a lot of them I get is, hey, what are your tips on new DMs? And I didn't really think of doing that because honestly, when most people ask me, I usually try and send them to Matt Mercer and Satine Phoenix's series they did on Geek and Sundry, which were both really good. Like when I first started DMing, I marathoned all of them and took a lot of notes and that's really what helped me learn today. And a lot of it's stuff I learned over time. So I want to kind of pass on some of my personal recommendations and things I learned over time that I felt like really helped me. And also want to give a quick shout out to Dirt Cheap Dungeons who sent me this awesome shirt and an even cooler hoodie. Which, if it wasn't summertime, I'd probably be wearing this right now. It's got the same logo on the front, but this awesome logo on the back. It's really comfy, really warm. I got so relaxed, I nearly died in a southeast heat wearing it. So, thank you guys. I appreciate it. I'll leave a link to them um, in the comments down below. And you should check out their stuff. They have an amazing Kickstarter where they build great uh, dungeon sets uh, for a good price. They also do a lot of giveaways on their uh, Facebook channel. So you should check that out as well. I actually won a lot, won not too long ago and got a set of figures and uh, some manga for it. It was great. So you should check it out. At the, um, at the least, hey, you could win something. And they're a great group of people, and I want to support other people in this community, and uh, I definitely want to give a shout out to them, because they've been great encourage encouragements in my life so far. Uh, when they found out I had a channel and we talked for a little bit, they were great to me. So, thank you guys, I appreciate it. And now for the video. So, my personal things I've learned that really helped me is go in. The first thing I want to say is have fun with it, because... There was a time where I was getting really stressed out, wondering if I was doing good or not, and one of my friends said, I need to focus on me having fun first, because if I'm not having fun, it's going to be hard for everyone else to have fun. And I realized he's right, because I feel like some people think of being a DM is a chore, but me, it's personally really fun. Like, I love it, and I was a bit stressed out at the time, and that's because I didn't know how to say no to my party, so... It was a little chaotic, being perfectly honest. So that was a problem I was going through. But when I learned how to manage and really work through some issues I was having, I love it. Like, I enjoy DMing more than I love playing. And I love playing as well. So yeah, that's why I say have fun and make sure you enjoy DMing. Because I know some people enjoy doing it every now and then. Some people, it's what they only love to do. I'm just saying, make sure you have fun with it. Because, I mean, you may be in a position where you only DM, but... Try and find a way for you to have fun with it, because if you're your partner, you should understand that you are making a sacrifice to do this. It is hard work to be a DM, so you really have to do it your own way to where you can have fun so you don't get burnt out, because DM burnout's a really bad thing I've noticed from a lot of people I play with. So make sure you're having fun to try and avoid DM burnout. And... Speaking of, which will segue into the next one, is don't be afraid to say no, because I had that problem when I first started playing of being afraid to say no, and that can go wrong really quick, because I let one of my players make a crazy broken character at level one, and I didn't even think about it. I didn't even double check what he said, because he was a pretty experienced player, and I just assumed what he was doing would be perfectly fine, and it ended up he was like... Uh, had near max stats, had a 23 AC, and all this other crazy stuff. And after that, I realized I need to look into what my players are saying. So don't be afraid to say no to them because, like, I have players ask me all sorts of things all the time. Like, can I have this army of tigers? Can I have griffins and all this other stuff? And sometimes you got to not be afraid to say no because it can sometimes ruin what you're planning or... Or it could just be a completely outlandish idea. So sometimes you do have to say no to keep the game balanced and keep things easy for you at the same time. Because they will sometimes expect a lot of you. And sometimes you got to be uh, make a hard choice and say no. But I also don't want to say make just a hard shutdown. Like sometimes I'll offer them an alternative. Like say, hey, instead of this, you could have this. Or uh, something along those lines. Like... I actually had the Griffins thing asked to me, and the, also the Tiger thing was based on the same player trying to have an entire animal kingdom following him, 
And he's like, hey, why did I take animal handling if I can't recruit every animal I find? And me, with my limited amount of minis, I'm like, listen, you want a Griffins, so you're going to have the anima handling that's really going to help you run on Griffins. So just be glad you got that, because everyone else is going to have a hard time navigating their Griffins because no one else has animal handling. You say, oh, that's true. So yeah. And next, the third thing I want to talk about is keep table talk to a minimum. So that is a bad thing that I still have trouble with sometimes is everything getting derailed and people making jokes and everything getting segue. And there's not a problem with that. It's good to have fun and relax with your friends, but try and keep it down to a minimum. Like it's good to have someone there to be good about keeping people on topic. And sometimes that's gotta be you, but it's also good to have someone else that's for it. Like I got another friend who's a DM in a party who can realize when things are getting a little chaotic and he's pretty good about saying, Hey, let's, let's wind it back guys. So that's what I gotta say at times just to keep yourself from getting completely derailed. And so that wasn't really a big thing, but it was something. And one thing I noticed that does help is this is something I don't do, but I noticed some DMs even particular have it where all cell phones are banned when they're on the table. And with possible emergencies and D&D Beyond being a thing, it's not really something I do because I have some players that use apps and stuff for helping them play. But I guess that'd help you if you're having a really bad problem with people getting distracted. The one limit I had on is when I had a player playing a mobile game in the middle of us playing, and that I shut down pretty quick. All right. All right. And next thing I want to say is this is one of the biggest things to me. If you mess up, try not to let it show. But if someone calls you out on it, don't make a big deal out of it. And what I mean by that is um, if you mess up, say a monster has an ability you completely forgot to mention don't um, uh, make a big deal out of it. Like, just be like, hey, I forgot this last term, but I'm going to implement this from here on out. Or if there's something you completely forgot, just keep calm. Just think your way around it. Because more than likely, if you mess up, your players may not even mention it or notice it at all. Like, it could be something completely fabricated in your head. But once you um, uh, call light to that, hey, I messed up, your players may think, oh, crap, what's he doing? So try and stay confident cause, and keep your party from not worrying about you and it should be fun. And not that it should be a big deal in the first place, but just don't worry about mistakes as often because everyone makes mistakes. You watch Critical Role, Matt Mercer still makes mistakes to this day and he's played D&D since I don't know how long. He, it's been a while. So, uh, and me, I'm still new to it as well. And I know a lot, but I still make mistakes and it's fun. Like there's... Well, there's these books, and there's all these books, and that's just some of them to know. You can't be expected to know all of them. No one can. That's insane. So, yeah, just if you make a mistake, don't make a big deal out of it. Just uh, don't rule lawyer it either. Just be like, hey, I think you messed up on this, or hey, I have this ability that I don't think you factored in. Just be easy with your DM or be easy with your player. So, yeah, just... Overall, just try to stay positive. Be nice. Like, don't try and tear people down. Just um, try and help everyone improve over time. Like, don't call them out on something. Like, just, it's a lot easier to subtly suggest something to somebody and not, like, try and call them down on it and make them feel terrible about it. That's just not a good environment to play in. All right. And that's all my major things. And... One other minor things I'd say is some things I learned over time is if you have a lot of players in the party, instead of focusing on one enemy, have some minions as well. Minions help balance encounters very easily to me, and they're fun to me. I kind of like some interactions you can have with some big bad guys and their minions, like a very smart lich who can't stand his goblin followers who always make mistakes, or um, dragons with their overly obsessed kobold uh, fanboys. No, stuff like that. Stuff you can have a little fun with. Uh, make the uh, villains more likable. And as far as things you need, these are the only things I'll say you really absolutely need as a new DM, and that's the Player's Handbook and the Monster Manual. Reason for it is you need a Player's Handbook so you know basically how the players work, and you need a Monster Manual for how the monsters work. All the other stuff is really fluff. I mean, you need dice, of course, but the mats and stuff, you don't really need mats. Like, one way I've seen it used is some people use tape measures and rulers and just measure out one inch is the 5x5 five five cube where your character can move. 
So you don't really need a vinyl map either. You could just play on a table and just use simple pieces. I've used chess pieces before because I didn't have enough minis. <laughs> All right. And the rest really is fluff. And I know some people see Dungeon Master Guide and think, I absolutely need this. And it helps a lot, I'm not going to lie, but it's not necessarily what you need. It does have magic items in it, traps, and a ton of other stuff that really help, but it's not really necessarily needed. But another thing I will say, it's not as needed, but it really comes in handy, is the um, a DM screen. This is the one I recommend, the newer one. I don't like that. I feel like the art on the older one's cooler, but this one is updated and has a lot of neat stuff in it. Like, <clears throat> looking at this thing, it is a full panel of info that really comes in handy. Like here, it's got like food lodging recommendations. It's got status effects, what they do, like example DCs, uh, damage by severity, um, a basic object, um, AC and health. It's insane how much stuff it has. And it has jumping rules, things people hardly know. So stuff like that can really come in handy. But one other great thing about it is also the fact that, say, it, uh, if there's something you don't really use, like me, there's a spot where it has like where all the abilities and their skills are associated with, but I got all the memorized, I don't really need them. What I did was, is I put a note card here, I don't know if you could tell, and what I did is I wrote all my players' names and I wrote all their AC and their passive perception on it. So in case I need to know real quick and didn't want to completely derail the environment, just to let them know. That's a simple, small thing, but I like that is having the passive perception on hand to kind of give the players a sense of they don't know what's going on. Because uh, like if um, you just tell an enemy they just hit a tripwire and hit a trap uh, before asking them what their passive perception was, they're going to be completely surprised. Like. Because if you ask them what their passive perception is out of nowhere in the middle of a tavern, they're going to um, be completely shocked and get on the edge. So I feel like for immersion effect, that's a really good thing. All right. And speaking of, I feel like some of the small things are important. Like when it comes to immersion, like good music's a good thing. You can find plenty of playlists on YouTube that are really good about it. There's other things that really help with it. There's even candles I saw that scented for specific dungeons you're in, which I thought was a pretty neat idea. I haven't tried them, but I want to. And, yeah. So now for the other things. These are all fluff books, but they do come in handy. Which, these are helpful for whether you're a player or a DM. And these would be... Um, uh, these are kind of more for... They have some player supplements and some uh, DM supplements... But it's Morning Canis, Tome of Foam, Sword Coast Adventure Guide, Volos, and Xanthar's. Xanthar has a lot of extra uh, classes in it. So does Sword Coast has a lot of background options as well. And Xanthar's has a ton for DMs, like a lot of tools that are really helpful. And it makes the actual tools in the game a lot more useful because you know what they do more. Morning Canis is a lot of war, some more monsters, and some extra sub races. And Volos is a lot of extra races and more monsters and some info to monsters. So that's really neat. So those are more fluff if you want to do more into that stuff. But as a player, it's something you may want to get for the extra class options because those are amazing. And next is, these are the final ones I'd say I'd recommend. They're neat to have for a starting point, but not really needed as well if you really like to homebrew. And that is the actual DM adventure books. Like I have two examples and I have um, Dragon Heist, which is a full adventure in itself in a full setting. So it is a neat thing to have if you want to play in another setting and you don't really have an idea what kind of story you want to make. And I feel like it's a good template for have a story you could work with. Then I have another one, which is the Tal'Dorei campaign setting. The difference is this is only the setting. It is Matt Mercer telling you how to run a game in his world, but not really giving you a story to it. So I feel like those are two good things to start with if you don't really have an idea what you want to set with. And Honestly, you can use different worlds for it. There's no real limit on it. It's your imagination is the limit. You can have a setting in Westeros. You can have a setting in Middle Earth, um, the, uh, the Witcher world, stuff like that. So when you're starting out, don't be afraid to start slow. You don't have to have a crazy grandiose adventure. It could be something small. Like you could just do the Lost Minds of Fandir from the star, uh, starter set. I actually haven't bought Star Set yet, so that's the reason I didn't mention it at all, because I wasn't sure what it was at first. I really need to buy it myself and really get a good idea how it works. I've heard it's a really great adventure, but I never actually played it. 
So yeah, I'm not sure. But either way, um, that is my overall tips on how to be a DM. I hope you enjoyed it. And the only other thing I can think of, it's just another smaller thing, is having a surplus of dice is not a bad idea because a lot of times we have a newer party. More than likely, not everyone's going to have dice, so it's good to have some you can share. But either way, thank you guys. I am glad there was a lot of people wanting to see a video on this. I hope this helped. If there's any other things you want me to cover, leave in the comments down below. If there's enough things, I'll make another video of it. If not, I'll probably just reply to your comment and tell you what I think about a subject. And thank you. I hope you all have a good day and I'll see you later. Remember to like, comment, subscribe. This channel is still doing great and I appreciate it guys. Let's see how far we can go with this because we're nearly 900 mark. We're so close. We keep getting so close and keep getting pulled back and it's driving me insane. And I am really psyched about it because, yeah, we'll see how this goes. Bye, guys.